For the following exercises, find the average rate of change of each function on the interval specified. All right, so what you first want to do is take this phrase and reinterpret that to mean the slope. All right, the average rate of change is simply the slope all right, of any two points of a function. I have that written down here also, so you can write that down if you like. All right, but you should definitely memorize that. Now, knowing that that's the case, if I want to find the average rate of change, and we know that it's the slope between any two points of a function, I'm going to write down my slope formula then, right? That it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now, in order for me to calculate the slope, I need to know these four variables. Well, do I know them? Did they give them to me from this piece of, in, you know, from this information? Well, they gave me the x values. Right, that's basically what this represents. This is interval notation over here for x. Now what that means is that this would be considered our x1 value, and then this would be considered our x2 value. So we do know these, but do we know these? We don't know them right off the bat, right? They didn't tell us that. But could we figure it out from the information that is given here? Remember, just reinterpret p of t as y, whether it's f of x, p of t, g of x, g of y, whatever. Whatever letter of whatever letter, just reinterpret that as y, okay? What that means is that you have an equation here that says y will be equal to blah, 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 blah. All right, and now <laughs> another thing is here, right? I'm calling these x1, x2, and I realize this is t in here. It doesn't matter, okay? It really doesn't matter. Who cares? Right, t, we're gonna, I'm calling x over here because I know in my slope formula I have, you know, I just memorize it y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So basically you could rewrite all of these t's as x's. Doesn't really matter, okay? So what that means is that I know that if I can, if I know the t values, aka the x values, I can simply plug them into this formula and I don't know what that was, but that was supposed to be like a, it, look, it, it gave birth to y, okay? Um, anyway, just forget that happened. Now, uh, what we need to do then is simply take these x's and plug them in, as we've just discussed, all right? So let's do that. Let's rewrite the function, okay? So we're going to write y is equal to, I'm going to just change the t's to x's for now. So x squared minus 4 times now x plus 1 all divided by t squared. Well, geez, I can't even remember what I'm saying, right? x squared plus 3. All right. Now, I'm going to put a little 1 down here uh, because I'm going to plug in all my x1 values. So all we need to do is take whatever we called x1 and plug it in. So we said that x1 is going to be negative 3, as we just stated up here. So now let's take that and throw it on in, right? So it's negative 3 squared minus 4 times then negative 3 plus 1, all divided now by uh, negative 3 squared plus 3. All right, so let's just simplify it a little bit. All right, negative 3 squared is simply going to be positive 9. Positive 9, then subtract 4 from that, and what do we get? We get a positive 5, okay? Then, so that's 5, and then what do we get from here? Negative 3 plus 1, well, that simply becomes a negative 2. All right, and now negative 3 squared again is positive 9. Add 3 to that, that sounds like 12. So when we do this on out, we simply get now negative 10 over 12, and then we can simplify this, right? If we wanted to divide out a common 2 between both the numerator and denominator, we would arrive then at a value of 5 over 6. All right, so I'm going to erase this work in a second but I'm first gonna write down the coordinates. All right, so we had the x1, which was negative three, we said, and then its corresponding y1 value was now negative, all right, five over six, negative five over six. All right, great. Now let's erase all this beautiful work, and let's now do y2. So it's literally gonna be the same thing, right? Okay, let's do it. So here, we will now do y2 would be equal, will be equal to x2 squared minus 4 multiplied then by x plus 1. 
that's x2, all divided by then x2 squared plus 3. All right, plug in now our x2 value. Oh, thank goodness. I love when I see 1 there, right, because it makes it so much easier. 1 plus 1, all divided by then 1 squared plus 3. All right, simplify it on out. Obviously, 1 squared is 1. Um, minus 4 then, that's a negative 3. Then 1 plus 1 is 2. All divided by then, basically 1 plus 3 will then be 4. Okay, so working this on out then, this becomes negative 6 over 4, and I can reduce that now down to uh, 3 over 2, right? It's negative. So I have my second point now. The x2 value was 1, and its corresponding y2 value was negative 3 over 2. And look, lo and behold, right, we have a nice, actually, I can just leave the work. I'll leave that work up. So lo and behold, now I have two points. And the average rate of change is simply the slope or the slope of the straight line that connects these two points on the graph. So I can just plug these in now to my slope equation, as I was mentioning earlier. So let's do it. So y2, we said, was going to be negative 3 over 2 minus then y1, which was negative 5 over 6, all divided by... Uh, 1, that's the x2, minus then a negative 3. Please be careful with your signs here. Make sure you have parentheses and whatnot. So this is going to be then, I'm just going to take care of the signs for right now with a fraction, just so I try to minimize my mistakes. So negative 3 half, or possibility of mistakes. So plus then 5 over 6, divided now by, it looks like this will be then 1 plus 3, right? 1 plus 3. All right, to add then the, Fractions in the numerator, what do we have to do? We have to find a common denominator. So I need to get this 2 and bring it on up to a 6. So I have to multiply this whole fraction by basically uh, 3 over 3, right? So that will now become negative 9 over 6. All right, proportionally, it's the same, plus now 5 over 6. And then all divided by now 1 plus 3 is simply 4. Now when I combine these two, right, and maybe I should have erased my work. All right, we'll just erase some of this. Now, when I combine that, right, we're really doing a subtraction from the numerators, okay? Do not change the denominators. So now this becomes uh, negative 4 over then 6, all divided now by 4. And now, remember, you have a basic, a complex fraction, meaning you have a fraction with an overall fraction. Now, the easiest way to do this is to take the numerator fraction and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, okay? Remember, 4, you can simply write as 4 over 1. So now this will, should be a little easier to see. What, I, what I'm saying is take that numerator fraction of negative 4 over 6, and you will now multiply it by the reciprocal of that denominator fraction, which is 1 over 4 now. And look, see how beautiful it works out? Please do not cross multiply here. It's not a cross multiplication. It is a linear multiplication here. All right, so therefore we can cancel these 4s. The only time you can cross multiply, I see this happen frequently, that's why I keep mentioning it. The only time you can cross multiply two fractions is if they are separated by an equal sign. This is a multiplication sign. You cannot do cross multiplication here. All right. So now we're going to have negative 1 over 6. And voila. That's the average rate of change. Okay, not a hard problem, just a little tedious and long, but it's, it's not bad. Okay, let's do some speed math. Let's calculate this. We have the same setup. The first thing is we'll label these x1, y1. Oh, no, x, that's what happens sometimes when you do speed math. You make silly mistakes. So this is x1, x2. So now we're going to rewrite that function. Let me choose the color red. I'm going to rewrite that function. y will be equal to 6. I'm going to change t to x. Uh, you don't have to, obviously, but I'm just doing that to keep everything relatively consistent. And now if I want to calculate y1, that means i got to plug in my x1 values. All right. So y1 will be equal to now 6 multiplied by the x1 value, which is negative 1, as we said. That is squared plus then 4 divided by now negative 1 cubed. Okay. So let's just simplify this. So negative 1 squared is going to be a positive 1 multiplied by 6 is a positive 6. Add that now to 4 divided by negative 1 cubed is a negative 1. Okay, negative times a negative times a negative is a negative, and 1 times 1 times 1 is simply 1. So we can write that just as I just as I have written like this. Okay, 
Uh, what I'm going to do though in just this one step is I notice that this fraction is negative and basically what I'm going to do is just change this addition sign then to a subtraction sign. All right, so just going to do that. Okay, so it's really six minus now four over one, but four over one is simply four. So this is saying six minus four. And what is that? Hold on, let me check the calculator. No, right, that would be a problem if I... <laughs> Could you imagine that? Uh... But sometimes I do check that. Yeah, I, uh, I actually can imagine that. Um, all right, next one. So here we have y2 is equal to 6 times then x2 squared plus then 4 over x2 cubed. All right, so now here we have y2 will be equal to 6 multiplied now by the x2 value we said was 3. So there's going to be 3 squared plus then 4 over 3 cubed. So y2 will now be, this is 9, right? 9 times 6 should be a 54, all right? And now we're going to add to that 4 divided by now. We have 3 cubed, which is 27, ooh, right? So now I need to find a common denominator between these two, all right? So I need to get this somehow over 27. And the way we do that is simply by multiplying this number by 27 over 27, okay? So that will work out to now be y2 would be equal to that. I'm going to just do in the calculator. 54 times 27. So we get 14, wow, 1458. And that will now be over 27 plus then 4 over 27. And now I can now simply add these two together, right? Add the numerators together. So this would be 1462 all over 27. And I don't think this is divisible, but we'll double check, okay? 14, 62, watch, I'm proved wrong. Now, it works out to some fraction. I'm not even gonna bother reducing it, all right? I'm just gonna leave it alone. So this is that crazy number, okay? And, all right, so now, those are both the Y2, uh, well, the blue is the Y2, and the red was the Y1. So now what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna make a little space, so now I'm just gonna simply rewrite the coordinates, right? So this, the x1 value was negative one and its corresponding y value was two as we found. And the second point, we said the x2 value was three and the y2 value was now this 1462 over 27. Okay, great. I think what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm just gonna set it on up and then plug it in. All right, to the calculator that is. So again, to find the slope, we use the slope formula that it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Plug in now the values. The y2 value was the 1462 all over 27, minus now two, then divided now by x2, which is three, minus a negative one. All right, so I'm just gonna throw this on into the calculator, 1462 over 27, and subtract two from it. I'm gonna use the decimal now. All right, so this is 52, this is about 52, uh, 0.15-ish, 52.15, all divided then by, uh, what do we get here? This is going to be three plus one now, right? So that's four. And simply again, just divide that value by four and we get about 13.037 or so. So this is about 13.037. Let me see if I can convert that into a fraction, all right? And yeah, it works out to be 300, uh, 352 over 27. So uh, this is the decimal answer, all right? And the exact fractional answer should be should be this. It should be three, 352 over 27, in case you wanted to do it that way. All right, guys, that's the average rate of change for that function. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.